Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Straight Talk. I'm sure many Hong Kong people will recognize our guest, Dr. Flora Sita Chong Lin. Flora is an accomplished ballerina and was a leading actress in 10 full length movies before becoming a fashion designer. Flora received the World Outstanding Chinese Business and Art Award in 2007 and Hong Kong 10 Outstanding Young Persons Award in 1990. She has created several fashion labels and is a dedicated philanthropist using her skills and resources to promote various charitable causes. Tonight, we have asked Flora to share with us her life journey as a dancer and a fashion entrepreneur. Welcome, um, Flora. Hello, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it has been a long time that we have seen you in Hong Kong, and I'm sure many people in Hong Kong have missed you. And I understand part of the reason that you're back in Hong Kong this time is to hold a memorial service for your late father, uh, Mr. Hilton Chong Lin, who passed away in January last year at the age of 99. And uh, my deepest condolences to you and your family. Thank you. Um, your late father, Hilton, was the longest uninterrupted serving elected office holder of, in Hong Kong history um, of the Urban Council since 1957 to 1991, some 34 years. Knowing that you would be on the show, a lot of people have shared with me that he was a dear mentor to many and his love for Hong Kong is missed sorely. So Flora, can you tell us a bit more about your father, especially when he was a councillor? how he stood up firmly, especially when he was a minority at that time? I think um, because he's from South America, he's used to being a minority and he fights for everything he believes in. And he was very, at early age, he went to Harvard to study um, politics under Henry Kissinger. Right. So he built his strength from strength. And in Hong Kong, at the time, he was the first Chinese um, uh, elected um, probably government person and who can speak very good English. His Chinese wasn't very good, but he, I think he believed in saving, helping, emerging all the general people and to build education. Because he had very international education from South America. He went to Beijing first and learned Chinese Mandarin and came to Hong Kong. He felt, wow, this is a fantastic melting pot. Can build pluralistic, and very um, crossover styles. He always felt we are from the earth. We have no racial issues. We must become all international. So he built um, his life under, um, he built, of course, civic association. And then that's to do with helping education and um, also the hawkers, the right. general people. Well, Flora, your father was truly a legend in Hong Kong and he was a key player in the transformation of Hong Kong to become an international financial centre. Um, I believe that he was known as the mayor of Hong Kong when he was elected mm -hmm. in 1981 as the first Chinese chairman of the Urban Council. I mean, he has left a great legacy, but on a personal note, how has he influenced your life and also on your, on your choice of your, your, your actual career? Um, I think right from the start, it is all about how he groomed us, that we live from one crisis to another. That will never end. So that's normality. It's not, I groom you to have a perfect life and become a ballerina. No, life is about building from scratch every day with calamities, with all sorts of uh, crises. So when he wrote in 1962, his, um, can say his first book, little pamphlet book, he said that there, we, Hong Kong people are going through one, from one crisis to another and we just have to use individual strength and group together lots of other people's strengths from all walks of life to overcome. Things will pass. So he actually groomed me with this mantra. Mm -hmm. So I have used that in every career I've done. It's not easy in any career as mm -hmm. a lady, as a woman at that time or as a young girl. Right, you know, you have done many things. You were a ballerina, you had movies, and now fashion entrepreneur, and now you're doing your philanthropy. So what has, what has he said to you over all these years? Because he's all been around, hasn't he? Yes. He actually um, believes change must be current. You must be progressive. You must be relevant. So if you change your career, he always says, you have to know what's coming next, not to repeat what's past. So what's coming next, you have to be original. 
You've got to have something that you have that nobody has. So then you are able to fight in the market because it is a difficult place for everybody because things are, the, the weather, the current um, structure, the future is changing and you have to know how to predict. You have to know all the north, south, east, west from all over the world, what is happening to this world. So he always told me, you have to know about politics, you have to know about the business, you have to know about all sorts of people, how people can work. So my mother's from Beijing, so I wanted to experiment more, the different structure of people. Hong Kong people are lucky, I feel, mm -hmm. because it's only Kowloon, Hong Kong, you know, it's, it's quite a fantastic place for the last 20 years, for me, 30 right. years. But China, to me, has a lot of 1,000 levels of different types of people, different ethnic groups, and it, it gave me much more education to use this mantra to go and experiment and learn from. So I have to put different ethnic groups together in um, a united piece to film or to mm -hmm. do fashion or to, it's absolutely right. exciting. My Flora, your father was known for strongly believing that traditional Chinese values were applicable in the modern world in Hong Kong, and he strived hard to prove the East-West compatibility. So how have you continued to validate this in your own life and business, this East and West sort of issue? Well, because I was uh, lucky enough to have gone to the Royal Ballet. So I was very frightfully English for a while, but because Hong Kong people thought we were all English people. But then when Dad um, started being the mayor um, of Hong Kong, I felt very proud to be the first Chinese to be in England, then brought everything to Hong Kong. And I joined Hong Kong Ballet because he was the, on the board it was on um, Hong Kong Valley Board as Urban Council, grooming arts and culture. And therefore, I kind of feel I must continue this English. Then it was English to Hong Kong. Right. It was that crossover. But now Hong Kong became the bridge. So it's even more we, we can play with. It's extreme Western and extreme Chinese to China. So right. I love to do things that's full of this crossover ideas. Right, you know, um, you just mentioned you were the first kind of person of Asian descent to study at the Royal Academy of Ballet. How old were you then? I mean, did you face any this extra discrimination at that particular time? Okay, I must tell you the difference between the Royal Ballet and the Royal Academy. Right. The Royal Academy is an academic examination board. Right. So anyone can do it all over the world. It's, it's a Commonwealth thing. All the um, Commonwealth countries can examine. Um, Royal Ballet is the professional dance school. Right. So I went to the professional dance school and that really groomed me to be, um, that was tough because I was the only Chinese. Did you face any uh, discrimination at that particular of time? Of course, of course. How old were you then? Nine. Wow. They used to come up to, and go, touch me, oh, she's alien. They think I'm really? an alien because all the girls are of, perfectly white and I was the first Chinese, but they treated me well because it was a boarding school. Right. So I actually felt like, if you see the same people every day, I forgot I was Chinese, they forgot I was Chinese, we just became one. And we grew so up So it takes together. time to get used to... Yeah, yeah but I used to cry behind the curtains, yeah, and sure. I couldn't tell people you're crying because that means you're weak. Mm -hmm. So what does it take to become a good ballerina, in short? Mental, physical, emotional, social and spiritual, the five elements, you don't wow. have it, you're out. Right. You have perfect physique, but you're weak. No, emotionally, you are like turmoil. No, if you're not spiritually strong, that you can endure all challenges, fight, fever, just keep on going. You, you really have to suffer. Did you ever have, do you ever need a mentor in Hong Kong? You're, do you have a teacher? Jean Wong. Right. Jean Wong is my mentor, and she's just absolutely disciplined. The minute you enter, your shoes is not in the right place. Put it away. You know, she's absolutely groomed you as a charismatic young person, very disciplined. Right. You also, apart from your experience, you also were involved in the development of ballet in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Ballet, for the last 35 years. So why is it so important to promote ballet from your point of view, and how is it going to change Hong Kong? I think Hong Kong became very strong as a male and female equal city. It's because all the ladies had arts and culture grooming. It started 
many years ago, more than 50 years ago, this Hong Kong Ballet Group. It was all the teachers got together and built students. So they discipline a lady's breeding, mm -hmm. how you talk, how you speak, how elegant, from inside out. Then came Hong Kong Ballet as a professional dance company. So they are like the advertisement for ballerinas, they're professional. So under these two, I was with both, I am still with both, and we feel all the ladies, one lady can kind of like vibrations, give out the signal that you have to sit stronger, taller, talk better, always say good things, always be positive, always give love, and people re will reciprocate. So therefore, I think um, due to, I have to say this, all the Hong Kong ballet teachers are saints because they actually help to groom the standard of refinement in young ladies. Right. Yeah. Um, before we go to a break, one quick question is, I know that you love ballet, but why do you go to China? Why do you go back to mainland to help uh, promote ballet? Why? I feel England, everyone is so well-mannered and Hong Kong is just absolutely better. Hong Kong ladies are even more refined, I think, in so many ways. But China, right now, they really need the female grooming and breeding okay. in international standards. Well, for our, let's take a short break now. And viewers, we will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We have the pleasure of having Flora Sita Chong Lin on the show this evening. And we have been talking about her father, the legendary Hilton Chong Lin, and his influence on her life. She's also been telling us about the role of dance in her life and her dream to grow this area on the mainland. So Sita, just before the break, you had we briefly touch on the area of the mainland and you said earlier in Hong Kong, belly actually helped our ladies to be uh, better groomed and be real ladylike. So how, how is your experience in mainland? I mean, are we any different? I think so. I think um, I've been in China um, for many, many years. I, ha I can't tell you. I think it's probably more than 20, 30 years because mom is from Beijing. All right. And my mother came from a very well-bred family because they play instruments, they're well-educated. At the time, uh, pre-war, they were all university graduates. So they, they were skating, they were horse riding, they were driving cars, it was just normal. But I think there was a, a period where things changed and didn't move. So therefore, I think now to bring the whole awareness, we have to bring back the contemporary culture to keep current. And the ladies, um, I can say they have this command style from their parents. Like, you stand, you sit, you do this, you do that. Otherwise, it's not, um, phila you're not filial. So I think now they're beginning to voice out their opinions. Because um, Chairman Mao said, half the sky is men, half the sky is women. But actually, for, for you to come out just like a man, it is co incorrect. So we cannot be this bossy command. There's many ways, negotiations. How do we um, bring up our children? How do we um, eat? How do we mm -hmm. talk? How do we give space for others to give their opinion? Have you seen now ladies in, in the main actually improve with their way of living through ballet? Um, I think they've improved through financial. They look good, right. but the minute they start talking or they start yelling or they start um, doing things like flaunting. Uh, it, it's a little bit abrupt to us who, where we are a little bit more respectful towards each other. Let's say that. They don't really understand that. They just think... Is it changing though? Um, it's changing. Through ballet, yes. Because I make my students very disciplined. Don't speak loudly. Think before you speak. If you have nothing good to say, keep your mouth, lips smiling. Right. And then just keep it in your heart and maybe discuss it. Don't um, gossip. Um, success comes from giving. Love and kindness. Otherwise, it becomes fighting. Right. Yeah. So Flora, I'm sure the viewers, until now we feel your passion on education and your love for other people. And I know that you have set up a 10 art a foundation that you help to promote dance for the, um, the underprivileged and for the orphans. So how has that changed your lives? 
Um, actually, Dad, um, we did this 13 years ago. He's the chairman and all my brothers and sisters, we are all in the committee. We built it because we felt that education, my father gave um, free education to the secondary in Hong Kong. He promoted it and it is successful. So I want to give free, actually it's not just dance, it's performing arts. Right. So we want to give scholarships to the underprivileged, the orphans, the um, autistic children, and poverty, poor children, and extra talented children. Um, from there, you, you go ground up, young people groom, they start grooming the older people, and it becomes a little bit more longer, but because I've opened the school and now philanthropy for over 13 years now. But it's really important. Oh, the charity foundation in Hong Kong is 19 years. Right. But my school is, um, my schools are like 12, 13 years. And I put them together so the actual paying students work with non paying students. The well to do with non well to do, they cross culture, groom each other. Mm -hmm. And that will bring up from all levels, there's a thousand levels, not just rich and poor, it's just so many gray areas in China. Right. But I think it is working, this model is working because not only teacher can influence, students watch each other. If I'm eating a five-star lunch and you're having rice and just a bit of pickles, they share. Right. And it helps, it gives a child and enable them to be philanthropic as well. So I'm trying to build a much more important um, breeding house of self-grooming, helping each other instead of just command and demand, you just do ballet. So this foundation builds the entire structure. We have boys too. So the boys um, have to learn from administration to stage production, to do um, arts and craft for doing a little stagecraft, um, make costumes, makeup. So they're all well groomed in the theater arena, mm -hmm. not just on stage and not just a star. Right. Yeah. From dance, you start as the lead actress in several Chinese movies that we started say earlier, and then you actually moved on to fashion designing. And you have made your name for yourself, and you had um, uh, developed a few several clothing lines. And um, how do you get interested in fashion? As you said earlier, I mean, you want to be trying to different things. And and how uh, do you have a message in the fashion that you are actually doing? Well, let's go back to two things. I never intended to become a actress or become a designer. The, the fashion really is that someone bumped into me in the street and said, oh, you look good, be a model. Okay, model. And then from models, oh, you do this and then I start designing. Um, um, acting was just an accident. They saw me, I was Miss Hong Kong because Xiu Feng Feng could not, Josephine Feng got pregnant and cannot do it and overnight I did something on TVB and that's it. A contract offered because I came back from the Royal Ballet. An accident. And then fashion is because my sister fell in love with a Frenchman and she started a fashion house and she goes, oh, but I love this guy. Fashion or fa I said, go, 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 I help you stand in. So she's, overnight she goes, uh, the budget is this cost at this percent of the rent and then that's the cost of the sell it like this. Mm. Go and get, go to your cabinet and get some clothing and, and just make it. So I, I did costume design. So I said, okay, I'll just help you. Help, help, help. She never came back. And so I became this fashion designer. So it's accident, but I helped my, my, my family. Yet then I became successful is because I think I study along the way continuously. So... Um, I feel like this brand is successful at the time because um, I use very Western ways. Like Chi Pao, I used to make it um, backless and use leather with embroidery um, or use... Um, now I'm using very natural t uh, vegetable uh, fruit dyes and um, use reuse fabric to remake vintage clothes and I make ballerina leotards and tutus. So I actually work with everybody from India, from Japan, uh, the poorest place in China, they do this uh, wax dyeing. So I, I go everywhere and make this, but my motto is really to save the world. I do not want to use real dye, I use vegetable dye. Well, Flora, I mean, thank you for your sharing of your 
your feelings about passion for fashion. But what advice would you give to young aspiring Hong Kong people who want to get into the fashion design business? Because it's, it seems very glamorous. I mean, you, you look nice today. I'm sure your your people were your your your, your clients will be very happy to have your clothes. I mean, what would you advise the young persons? I think be current. Feel what's happening. Everyone's going IT crazy and going AI crazy. So maybe use the new technology and, and use new ways, find new ways of making um, your, your shapes. And you have to think of the future and not now. If you repeat another collection that is just going to open a boutique and s sit there and wait for people, I think better not do it. Mm -hmm. I think better just uh, get into uh, marketing or doing... Um, merchandising, um, help big houses because they have the infrastructure. Like um, everything is nobody. Cars are running without people. The machines have no one there. Mm. And then the clothes, it's just like you can make it with machines. Mm. But yet, what, what design patterns, is it done by your hand? Design now is all electronically done. So maybe think of something original. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there as a waste. Right. Laura, you, we've been also talk apart from your dancing, your, your, your fashion design, a bit of acting. We're talking about so arts and culture. Do you have great passion for? How do you, in your opinion, what role does arts and culture will help to shape to shape the identity of Hong Kong? That I think we really need a, a strong identity. How can we use to leverage to promote social and political change in our lives? In your opinion, um, I think from a dance point of view, Hong Kong is a very progressive place. We have to keep that going. Like Hong Kong Ballet, we do not just want to be the Royal Ballet or just another company doing Swan Legs and Giselles. We, our director is fantastic. He crossover film to um, like Vogue fashion to new stories. We just did Coco Chanel. We did um, wrote a, a Hong Kong style Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. uh, about two families. I think it is about how we bring forward our accents and images. Right, Flora, the time goes call. very Sorry. fast. Sorry, <laughs> uh, we want to ask you the last question. You've been in the mainland for like 20 to 30 years, and you know there'll be more and more integration needed between Hong Kong and the mainland. What tips will you give to Hong Kong people so that they can so, so quickly and happily integrate into the life of mainland? I think it's not integrate. If you look at it that way, it's too slow. We must get involved. The whole buffet must include the bigger world and don't just talk about mainland. Mainland is very international now, honestly. Mm. Everyone is in there, so let's just go into the melting pot and groom ourselves as Earthling. Everything goes. Chinese and Western, same story, yin yang. And if it goes faster, right. it will turn brilliantly energized. Energy needs that. Well, Flora, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. It's I wish perfect. we have a longer interview. We appreciate your time with us, Flora. And I'm sure your passion for ballet and fashion design has inspired many in Hong Kong and on the mainland. Your father must be proud that his legacy and can do Hong Kong spirit lives on in you. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in, and we will see you next time.